Hi right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hockey Amazing Spectacular Terrific, the Great One, the People's Champion. Your host, the Hunter, welcome back to the Baseball Hut, and hopefully you like this video, and hit that subscribe button. So we've been off a couple of days, been awfully quiet, but we've got some things here to talk about. Obviously, this has been a, a very slow offseason for pretty much everybody but the Dodgers, and to a lesser extent, the Yankees. But it's been a very, very slow uh, offseason. Uh, for all the major league teams, including the Mets. Although the Mets, in terms of just major league talent, they've brought talent in here. But you got to understand something. People have been complaining about uh, all these minor league deals. I don't hear any other team. Maybe it's just because I'm a Mets fan. I don't hear too many people complaining about uh, other teams signing minor league players uh, to minor league contracts. But it just seems to be people get very exercised as a New York Mets fan when the Mets sign some minor league player. I, mean, I, I, I don't get that, you know. Uh, I would mention that David Stearns has come in and he's gotten rid of so many people in the farm system and so many people in the front office that he's had to bring in all these different people. So if you notice him more signings than usual, that's the reason. Now, he's done a very good job of bringing a lot of pitching depth into this organization because this organization over the last four or five years has given up a lot of uh, you know uh, pitchers that have been in the minor leagues. Justin Dunn, for instance, Anthony Kay. I'm just throwing names out there because these are players that the Mets traded over the years uh, that were in the farm system, and they haven't been here. I'm going to have a lot of videos all over the place on the Baseball Hut 2 about WFN, a lot of stuff going on, just a complete total insanity there. Uh, just there all over the place. Uh, but looking where we are now with the team, uh, the team... We're about less than four weeks away from spring from pitchers and catchers. That's February fourteenth, um, and we are basically uh, seeing. You know, it's, like I said, this is such a strange market. There's so many players still available, and and at least half of the market, in terms of free agents, they're all unsigned. Now, obviously, the Mets' priority, from what the word is, is that they are looking for a another reliever or two. Now, the rumor was in the last day or two is that they're interested in Robert Stevenson. He pitched for the Rays last year. Uh, he's bouncing around a little bit, pitched for the Pirates, the Reds, just going through his numbers in his career. They seem to go up. They seem to swing really, really good to really, really bad. So uh, there are a couple of teams connected to him, the Dodgers, the Dodgers, uh, the Phillies. Uh, before that was the Rangers, the Yankees, Houston, Angels, the Cubs, the Red Sox, and the Orioles. And he his name has swung because he pitched really well for the Rays. Uh, always with the Rays, but the buyer beware if you pick up a player that's been on the Rays. But the Rays, in terms of their relievers, you can bring a guy in uh, that's pitched well, and he could pitch well for you. We saw that with Aaron Loop when Loop was here in 2021, but then he didn't pitch well in 22. But Stevenson looks like the type of guy, just looking through his numbers, he, he runs hot and cold. He'll run really, really hot where he pitches great, and then he pitches really terribly. Just going through his career numbers. I go I go through career numbers. I don't worry about when a guy hits the market. So his numbers are sort of run hot and cold. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, we know that the, the lefty Wandy Peralta is still out there. Obviously, he pitched for the Yankees last year and last few years. I like to see the Mets bring another lefty. I'm not totally sold on Brooks Raley. Um, that's that's something to consider. Now, at the DH spot. At the DH spot, right now, the Mets do not have a DH. In fact, uh, going into the season, the Mets will be relying upon DJ Stewart and Mark Vientos. Now, I like Vientos' swing. I think he should have gotten a hell of a lot more um, at-bats last season. But obviously, the word was and rumor was is that uh, that slob Daniel Vogelback was getting a lot of at bats because the former general manager was pushing him on Buck Showalter. That was the rumor when Showalter was let go at the end of the regular season. A lot of people, including myself, wanted to see Mark Vientos play, and Mark Vientos in particular hit. He needed to get at bats. Now he had a very good September. But September doesn't mean anything. Now let me talk about DJ Stewart. He had a very good end of July. He had a very good, an excellent August. He did okay offensively. Um, he hit 11 home runs. He had a lot of home runs in a short period of time. 
He had 244, a 506 slugging percentage, but he's been a career 210 hitter over his career. He's been very inconsistent. He strikes out a lot. He's not really a guy that uh, is a very good outfielder. Uh, they played him a lot because obviously they traded uh, Canna and they traded Pham. They had to put somebody that's been a veteran. Uh, obviously, he is a guy that was considered a very good prospect, but he's had issues. Health has been the biggest issue. That's kind of why the Mets shut him down the last few weeks of the season. I would not make him, and I'm glad that the that Stearns is smart enough, that's David Stearns, the Mets president of baseball operations, has, has been smart enough not to say that he's our right fielder, he's our DH. He knows what he has with this particular player. So I'm I'm I have trust in him as, as an evaluator of talent. Now, the Mets could use a DH. Uh they were kind of rumored to be talking to several guys. One recently was Jorge Soler. I don't know what's going on there. I haven't heard much. Uh, J.D. Martinez, we heard about him a few weeks ago. And, of course, Justin Turner's out there. Let me just go and run through a couple other names out there. John Peterson, although I would prefer the Mets to get right-handed bat. Uh, but really, the two guys and the two three guys that we've heard of the last few weeks have been J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, and Justin Turner. I would not take umbrage with any of them being here with the Mets next year. But I would not, in particular, give more than one year to Martinez and not more than one year to Justin Turner. Based on their age, based on, in particular, J.D. Martinez is back. I know Martinez had a very good year last year with the Dodgers. But I would not give him more than one year. Just based on the fact that he had a bad year the year before and he was dealing with a back injury. Justin Turner, he's older. Now he can play the field. Uh, I don't want him taking too many uh, reps at third base, even though he's a better defender than, uh, obviously, Fientos and Beatty. But I can live with giving him one year. I will not give him two years. I think that's why their markets are sort of held up. Now, Solaire, uh, I would not give more than two years on him. I mean, to be honest with you, that's all I would want to give to see the Mets do. Now, the Mets do need another bat in this lineup. Any one of these three guys would do a good job batting behind Pete Alonso. They'd be very good protection. Um, all things being equal, it's very difficult for me to figure out who is a better fit here. But they certainly need another guy that can get regular bats, that's going to be able to have flexibility. See, Martinez, the one thing that hurts Martinez is he can't play the field because he's a DH. So Larry, you can play him in the outfield. Justin Turner, you can play him on the infield. That's their flexibility, but Martinez is a better hitter against better pitching. He hits really good pitching. So that's his biggest uh, uh, positive as a player. Negative is he can't play the field at all. The other guys can play the field. So that's where we stand right now. Uh, like I said, other than the um, Dodgers and the Yankees, very few teams have done <laughs> a lot of work. The Giants have done some stuff. I mean, there's so many players on the market uh, that are still out there. Bellinger, uh, Josh Hader still out there. Josh Hader floating this idea that uh, that the that the Astros are interested in him. I don't believe that. They got a good closer. Why would they want to bring him in there? I'd be surprised about that. Um, I thought the joke. I thought about Marcus Stroman was pretty funny that he signed with the Yankees, uh, and I have a video on that about uh, a WFN alum coming out in support of him. Uh, talk about the Met pitching staff real quickly. Um, last year, they we went into the season with the Mets starting rotation, supposedly the one of the better ones in, in baseball. We know what happened there. The biggest thing, the biggest thing we need to see is the Mets um, do a better job of going further in the game. The problem last year was obviously... They only pitch five or less innings in, in the games. And other than uh, Kode Senga, nobody was stayed healthy in the rotation all year long. They need to get they need to be healthy. They need to make every start. And of course, they need to be able to go more than five innings. Okay, I think we'll get that from Quintana. If he's healthy, he'll he'll pitch you five innings, six innings. Senga, I think we're fine with. He's the ace of this staff. We need to see what Manea does. We'd like to see what happens with Luis Severino. I don't know. 
I'm sort of half and half on him just based on the fact that he's been not been healthy in a long time. He's not pitched regularly in a long time. And Adrian Hauser is a fill-in guy. I don't know what their plans are with him, but he is going to be a free agent after the season. So he's an interesting piece to me. And the Mets have some other guys. I'd like to see him get another starter in here, but if not, I can live with what they have. And they, they have plenty of depth in terms of behind them to a certain degree. I would mention, it would not surprise me if this group, this Mets team, uh, was probably middling in terms of how they play the first two months and then start to play better as we get into June and July. And the reason I say that is because the Mets farm system is getting close to uh, um, having ready players to that can improve this club. And I think that's part of what the Mets are hoping for, is that guys like Christian Scott, uh, Mike Vassell, Jet Williams, Drew Gilbert, Luis and Hal Cunha are, are ready to, to contribute uh, by the time we get to the middle of the season. So that's kind of where I see this group. This is where I see this group as we get into, into spring training. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.